Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So we're actually going to be taking a little break from the SDI in this video. We're going to be working on the truck. We're going to get our first oil change knocked out on this truck. Now I've already had one done since I picked it up in uh, November of last year. Uh, but this is the first time that I'm doing it on this truck personally. I went to the dealer for the uh, first oil change in my ownership. And obviously I just wasn't happy with uh, the overall service. It's just, they, they even questioned me what oil to use and everything. It was a weird situation. So I said, next oil change and any future oil change, I'm just gonna do it myself. Since I do enjoy maintenance and doing it myself anyway, uh, so I figured, from now on, let's get it done on my own so I know it was done right. So the intervals that I'm doing on this truck is every 3,500 to 4,000 miles. I'm just over that 3,500 mark. Uh, I always like to do maintenance sooner rather than later. Uh, with my STI, I do it every 3,000. Um, again, it's kind of overkill, but for me, I just, again, I like to do it earlier th rather than later. I'm around 3,600 miles or so on this uh, current oil change. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it knocked out. Now, in terms of what we actually need for this oil change, Everything in front of me right now is all the tools and everything that you're going to need for this oil change. Very simple, very straightforward. There's no crazy tools or anything like that. You're going to need six quarts of synthetic 5W30. I'm using Motorcraft. This is the preferred oil for this motor and this truck. Um, I'm also using a Motorcraft oil filter. Uh, the part number is FL500S. Uh, I'll leave a link below for everything in case you guys are looking to do an oil change on your 3.5 EcoBoost as well. Uh, in terms of tools, um, this is the only one that you're gonna need, a 15 millimeter wrench for the oil drain bolts. And just in case you might need an oil filter, strap or wrench, uh, depending on who did it last, if they did it too tight, you will need one of these to get it loosened. Hopefully it's not too tight. Again, I had the dealer do it last, so uh, hopefully you don't run into any issues. And obviously you're going to need some type of oil pan for the oil to drain into. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let the truck cool down just a little bit. I just came in uh, from driving it, so I don't wanna burn the living crap out of my hands when I'm uh, taking the drain plug out. So I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. I'm gonna get some cardboard and stuff laid underneath just so we don't create a mess. Because the oil pan on this truck, uh, there's a lot of pressure to it and the way they have it designed, it's kind of a pain in the butt uh, to not make a mess. So hopefully we can be as clean as possible uh, and getting this oil change done. So let me go ahead, pop the hood, let the truck cool down a little bit and we can get going on this oil change. All right, so I'm laying under the passenger side of the truck. You have to take this little uh, body panel off. It's just two eight millimeter bolts uh, that go right into there. So you just gotta loosen them. And then you have access to the oil drain bolt, which is right there. Uh, that is a 15 millimeter bolt. So we're gonna go ahead, loosen that up, not take it out totally. Uh, we're gonna keep pressure on the bolt. Uh, and then when you're ready to actually release it and all the threads are out, um, we can go ahead and release it real quick and hopefully not make a mess. But first, before we do that, I'm gonna go up top in the engine bay, take off the oil cap uh, and pull out uh, the dipstick a little bit so it has better airflow uh, and it drains properly. All right, so we got the oil starting to drain. Gonna let it sit here for 10, 15 minutes or so, let everything get out as much as possible. It wasn't too bad, it got on my hand a little bit, but uh, we were able to uh, not make a mess. We got it into the bucket, so we are good. So I'm gonna let this drain, uh, then once this kind of starts dripping, we'll put the plug back in, and then we can go ahead and do the oil filter. All right, so it looks like the oil stopped dripping. Now we're going to put the 15 millimeter bolt back into the pan, tighten it up, uh, you just want to do it snug. You don't want to do anything crazy or anything like that. You don't have to torque it down. Just do it nice and snug with the 15 millimeter wrench.
All right, so now we are going to get to removing the filter. This is the front of the vehicle, and if you go right under, um, you can see the white filter right there. It's kind of hard to get to. You kind of got to reach your hand up there, but you can actually see this little kind of drip pan. So when you uh, actually remove that, um, it's going to drip right off of uh, this little pan here into the oil bucket here. So let me go ahead. Let's try to loosen it by hand, hopefully. Um, hopefully we don't have to use a wrench, but uh, let me give it a go. Alright, so I was completely mistaken. This didn't even drip from here. It dripped from this little hole back here, which you guys can't even see yet, but I was able to catch it in the pan, thankfully. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm gonna let that drain out and then we can uh, get the new filter prepped and put the new filter on. Alright, so I was able to loosen the filter, no problem. Came right off just by hand. Uh, so now what we're actually going to do is prep the new filter. And by prepping, all I mean is simply just pouring a little bit of oil uh, into it, just so it's uh, not starving once you start it up. I'm also going to put a little bit of oil around the gasket here just for a good seal. Uh, one thing you want to make sure on the old filter that this gasket was removed as well. You want to make sure it's on the old filter because if this gasket was left behind uh, on the engine, um, you would have a bad time. So make sure that's removed on the old one, uh, but let's go ahead and prep this. Got a little out of hand there, it spilled out. There we go, just a little bit of oil in there just so it's not starving and just kind of wipe your finger around the gasket right there and you should be good to go. I'm gonna clean this up, it came out faster than I thought uh, and then we can go ahead, get this on, tighten down, then we can fill the uh, motor back up with oil and we should be good to go. All right, so here is a look at the oil. Uh, now it definitely is used. It has about 3,600 miles on it. Uh, they do use the factory or the same filter that I put on, which is a good thing. Don't worry, that's just a paper towel I threw in there. Um, but overall, pretty used, pretty dirty. Um, so I'm glad I'm changing it. So I'm gonna start with the small bottle, put this in first, and then I'm gonna check if anything's leaking. I don't wanna put the larger jug in and then realize it's leaking, so I'm gonna put the smaller one in first. Now you may have already seen me do it, but make sure you put the dipstick back in. Don't leave that out. All right, so before we go ahead and start it up, I'm actually going to check the oil catch can. I'm running a JLT 3.0 uh, oil catch can. Just going to check it, empty it, make sure everything is good. I usually check it every thousand to 1500 miles or so, and it's usually uh, about a quarter, a little less than a quarter full. Um, so let's go ahead and check it. It's been a while and see how much is in there. It's about an eighth filled. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into uh, the oil, the old oil, clean this up, and we can put it back on and start the truck. All right, so it's all cleaned out, looking good. We're gonna go ahead and put it on, then we can start the truck up.
Okay, so the last step that we're going to do, I actually already did this, and unfortunately it wasn't recording, uh, but I'm going to reset the oil life maintenance uh, on the screen on the truck. So all we're gonna do is scroll down. Uh, as you can see, it's already at 100%, but all you're gonna do is hold okay on the steering wheel there, and it's going to reset. And it's already reset, obviously, because I already did it. So I got 100% oil life. And also what I do is I set trip two um, on the trip fuel here as my uh, indicator of how many miles are on this oil change. Again, I already did it, I already filmed it. So uh, same thing, I'm just going to reset it, hold okay. So now I know exactly how many miles are on this oil change. Trip A or trip one, uh, I reset every time I get gas. I just got gas uh, today. Um, so we are all set. All right, guys, so that wraps up the oil change on the F-150. Enjoyable experience, although it was very, very hot, uh, but very easy to do. And the best part about it is I did not have to jack this up. I didn't have to jack it up. I didn't have to put it on stands. I didn't have to put it on a lift. I can crawl right under compared to the STI where I got to lift it up uh, and crawl under and get things done. Really nice. Not too bad at all. Got it done in about 45 minutes. Uh, but if anybody is interested in any of the products that I use, I'll leave them in the links below. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple. I'll catch you guys in the